Hey, what's up? Don't click away. Today I'm going to show you how to replace a cracked front screen on a Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for sticking around and checking out this episode. If this is your first time here and you guys enjoy all things tech and repair related, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and smack the bell so you're notified on our latest videos. For those of you guys out there that do need a repair, please visit us at www.mrphonedoctor.com or simply visit us at any of our social media platforms found below. If you are inquiring on pricing, please visit us online and you can click on repair rates to get an estimate. All right, let's go ahead and begin repairing this cracked front screen on this S20 Ultra. So as you can see, it does have some severe impact points down here on the bottom right, right here along the left, and then the top right corner. So we're going to repair this one out of frame. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and set this frame in OLED onto a heating plate, let it get nice and toasty, and we're gonna cut this cracked layer of glass off. So for those of you guys out there, you know, it is gonna be a lot, lot cheaper to replace the glass only than replacing the whole OLED and the frame together. So most repair shops in your area, they're gonna to wanna to charge you for this whole assembly when even though your front glass is cracked only. So this repair is gonna definitely save you guys some money. So make sure to reach out to us if you guys do need a repair on this one or any other Samsung Galaxy, we can definitely help you guys out. So let's go ahead and begin repairing this cracked front screen on this S20 Ultra. So we do always want to first make sure we test our device, make sure that the touch and everything's fully working. So we do have our tester right here, and we actually did a teardown on the S20 Ultra. If you guys are interested in seeing that, I'll go ahead and leave a, li a link right above so you guys can check that out. So I'm going to go ahead and connect our S20 to our tester here, and we're going to want to connect this flex onto here. There we go. Good. So we'll go ahead and turn it on. Here we go. This is her right here. So these testers are kind of funky. We actually have to thread them in upside down so you can see how this one's a little strange since we did run our flex cable up above. Um, it's just a little bit easier to test them this way than trying to sneak the OLED in through the bottom. So it's a little funky. But as you guys can see here, the main deal that we want to work is with, is with the touch. Make sure the touch is fully operable. So I'm going to go into the touch settings here. And we are here. And we can go ahead and test. Now this flex cable is glitching out on us. You can see it kind of flickering. That's actually something with the flex. We've tried replacing it, but I just think they're, they're a little bad. So uh, the connections are kind of funky, giving us this little like static TV view sometimes, but we know that it's just the flex cable. Now this display, it does have a small little bleed. So since it does have a bleed, I'm gonna go ahead and remember that it's got a bleed right here. That way when I'm coming through with the line, I'm very, very delicate on this, okay? Um, you don't wanna treat it roughly or anything like that because you can actually damage the entire OLED display and, and cause it to go out and you do want to be very very gentle with these as well just because the polarizers on them are very very thin they're not like the S10s S8s where they're a little bit thicker so they're getting thinner thinner as we go on with the next generation so we just want to be very extra delicate when handling these because we don't want it to tear and clip the polarizer so everything looks good I'm gonna go ahead and uh, set it on my heating plate and we can go ahead and begin removing the cracked, broken screen. Okay, the device is nice and toasty. Let's go ahead and begin removing all these small little shards first, and then we'll go through with our line and go ahead and cut the glass off. So we are gonna need some gloves for heat protection, save our manos, and we are gonna need some safety goggles just to prevent any kind of shards from getting in while we're working on this. Uh, we are gonna use our clear card here, which we're gonna help pick and relieve a lot of these little broken shards. So I'm just gonna cut a little piece right here. There we go. And we're gonna use some of our solution to go ahead and help soften up some of these little shards. Good. 
So I'm going to first go ahead and start off by working these two areas here on the top because that's where we're going to thread our line in. I'm going to go ahead and use this card here that I have and just go through right here and remove all these little shards very gently. that one relieved. I'm going to go ahead and work on this other one right here. Let's add a little bit more solution. I'm going to go ahead and clear all these other little little guys here that are in the way just to prevent any kind of further damage because we know the bleed is right here. So just want to be extra careful. And I do recommend you guys not try this at home. You know we have a lot of years experience and we know how to handle these so if you guys are trying to do this first time it's going to leave to it's going to lead to loss of your OLED display and cause extra costs and repair so i highly recommend you guys find a professional that can do this kind of work and if you guys are trying to learn this and do need assistance um, we actually have a podio class online if you go to podio.com you guys can view some of the courses that we have and uh, if you need real-time assistance there's a course on there you can purchase and i'll be more than happy to assist you guys. So you want to be extra careful around all these little shards here. Just because these have a thinner polarizer, most of the times that we've seen is, you know, whenever the glass breaks, it actually goes in and damages the polarizer. So um, you want to pay extra caution when dealing with these here and there we have re revealed all this here so we're good I'm going ahead and get this little guy out of the way too while we're at it using our little sheet here if we can get in here the last thing you want is one of these little shards to actually come up while you're going through with the lines so you just have to be very gentle and remove this. You know, as you come through with the line, these little shards will end up moving up or down and damaging the digitizer. All right, we're good. We got majority of these little guys out. Let's go ahead and begin by cutting this glass off. So we are going to use a 0.03 for this procedure. We use this line for pretty much every type of OLED out there. Nice and steady is the key with these. You don't ever want to rush. Make sure you have a clear mind when you're doing this. You know, me being a business owner, I, I always have a million things on my head, so it's best to clear your head before going into this. So relieve yourselves from all distractions because this is very in-depth, tedious work that you need to focus on. All right. She's coming up beautiful though. You can see all the glue is staying on the glass, which is awesome. We're going to have very little OCA to clean from the actual display. Here she comes down to the final stretch. Finish her off gently, come through, boom, she is out. Just gonna break the line, tie this up, we don't need this anymore. And dispose of all this, you can see all the line that was used. And just removing that one glass, there's a good couple yards there. 
We'll put a little bit of solution down on here. Help relieve some of this. And there she is. Look at that glass. Beauty. Came off in one piece. That's what I like. So I'm gonna go ahead and want to give this a test. Make sure everything is functioning on here. So we'll let this cool off and we'll go ahead and do a touch test. Make sure everything's fully functioning. Okay, so the display is nice and cool. I can go ahead and move forward and continue doing the touch test. So I'm just gonna wanna be very careful handling this because it is exposed now. The OLED is all fully exposed. There is no glass or anything on it shielding it. So just be very careful. Always mind the flex. I'm just gonna plug this in up right here. And we are getting this flickering because this dang flex cable. Oh, we got some scrambled lines. Let's press it in. I hate these cables. I'm gonna have to upgrade them. Maybe there's a new batch that came out. We did get them when they first released, so I'm thinking there's some kind of connectivity issues going on. But our main concern is the touch. We want to make sure that we have full working touch. And it looks like this one had another extra little bead up on top that we didn't see. But there we go. So we can go ahead and move forward to our next step, which is going to be to clean all this OCA glue from the display. Once that's clean, we'll go ahead and remove the OLED panel from the mid-frame chassis. Okay, so she's nice and toasty. Let's go ahead and begin by using our little OCA removal tool to remove all this OCA. Now, if you were gonna put this OLED back into this customer's frame, um, I recommend just being very careful with this little camera because um, you don't wanna get any debris or anything like that in here. These cameras are glued down to the frames. You can replace them, but you know, trying to replace it after you get it dirty, um, it just puts a little bit more work. So I recommend just being very cautious around this area where the camera is and make sure no solution or glue gets in there. So we got the majority of the glue off. I can go ahead and uh, use our little magic eraser to get all the rest of these little hairlines that are on here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put some solution on here and just work it with this little sponge. And this is gonna get rid of all these little streaks and hairlines. If you guys haven't already subscribed, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. I'm going to be coming out with some more videos. I'm trying to get our hands on some of those Note 20 Ultras. And I'm sure, certainly, we're going to be getting our hands on the S21 very, very soon. So make sure you guys subscribe and smack that bell. All right, so let's go ahead and go through with our little toallita. We're going to do a good final detail, get all these last little residues I'm going to show you guys a couple little hairlines too that you may see while working on these you can actually see right here there's a hairline I'll show it to you I hope I can zoom into it but if you guys are working on these just extra extra careful because you know these hairlines are gonna be there but the good thing is when you use the OCA they, they fill in so you won't see them after you get this laminated onto the glass. They're very, very minimal. And it all depends on how deep they are. If they're really, really deep, you know, you may see them. So a fair warning to all our customers that we do our best to reduce this, but if the impact is severe, it could go through and, and cause little hairlines on the polarizer, which they may be noticeable after we apply the OCA. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. You know, it's just it just depends. So I do need to let you guys know. Gonna 
go in and clean, clean the bezel interior. Get any of this stuff out from underneath. That way when I go through with my card, any kind of shards or glass that may have been in there are removed. Alright, so we went ahead and removed the OCA. We can go ahead and test it once again, make sure everything's fully working. Alright, let's go ahead and plug our display onto our tester. Make sure everything is functioning as it should be. Bleeds didn't get any worse. There you go. You can see how everything here looks perfect. Touch is still operable. Beautiful, beautiful. There she is. Nice and clean. Ready to be removed from the frame assembly. Bring our heating plate back over here. We'll set this baby right in here. And remember, always let it get to temperature. So I'm gonna cut and I'll come back in about five minutes. All right, so the display is up to temperature. Let's go ahead and begin removing this OLED from the chassis. And I'm gonna go and use this clear OCA sheet to just go through and remove this OLED display. I'm gonna go ahead and start by putting a little bead of this ISO 99 underneath. This will just help dissolve some of this adhesive. I'm gonna to wanna to go ahead and, I'm gonna start from up on top here. Let's go ahead and uh, create a little entry point here. And we're gonna just cut through this like butter. And you guys may see some other people do this repair a little differently. You know, they may actually go in from the other side. We technically like to go from the top and work our way down to the inside. We notice that this leaves less kind of waves and any kind of dimples. So do keep in mind, you know, if we do do a replacement, you know, these displays are just so, so thin and delicate that while we're doing this, you may see a little bit of waving or some dimples. It's normal, you know, we can't guarantee flawless repairs for something like this because these are just so delicate. So please keep in mind, you know, guys, that if you do get a repair and you do see a little bit of waving, then, you know, I mean, that's just technically the way it's going to be. We really can't avoid it, especially these because we can't really do any of these in frame yet. We're still uh, doing some research to make sure that we can do the in frames um, without any bubbles right now we're getting a, some small bubbles so all these repairs need to be done out of frame as you guys can see this method that i'm doing here And patience, patience. You just gotta take this easy. Don't rush it, work it little by little. If you rush this, you're gonna end up causing some damage to the display. So you guys can see how much patience I'm taking with this removal. I'm just working every little section until we get all this mid-frame adhesive removed. We're almost there, I can see the flex. And I'm being conscious of everything. I can see where my card is and I can see all the delicate areas. So I know exactly how far I do need to go. Handle this carefully. Let's go ahead and take a peek and let's reveal the OLED. So she's ready to come out. It's just this flex is a little tricky lifting it up. So I'm gonna need to grab it and just work the flex out like so. And there she is. The display is removed from the chassis. 
See that? So we're going to need to remove some of this adhesive. I can see if I can work this out right now while it's nice and warm. And I can work some of it out. So you do want to do it while it's toasty. And sometimes we may need to actually lay it back on the plate to get the rest of this off. So we do want all this glue removed before we laminate. So let's go ahead and test it before we go ahead and clean this, make sure everything's working properly. We'll go ahead and connect the flex. Heard it snap. There we have it. All right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and give this a test. We're losing picture. There we go. We'll do our touch test, make sure touch is fully working, which everything here is. There we have her. She is looking good. So that pretty much wraps up our glass OCA cleaning and our OLED frame removal. Let's go ahead and step back in the back and we'll go ahead and begin laminating. All right, welcome back to the lab guys. We're gonna go ahead and begin laminating the OCA to glass on the S20 Ultra. And after we get that done, we're gonna go ahead and laminate the OLED onto the glass. So we are gonna be using our universal OCA mold for this process. If you guys are interested in seeing how these work, make sure you guys click above. I'll leave a card so you guys could see our little tutorial and review on these items here. All right, so let's go ahead and align our OCA first. We're gonna set our glass onto the base OCA universal mold right here. And we're going to use our little plastic stickers to adhere the OCA on it. We're going to reveal this first layer of OCA. And we're going to want to go ahead and just align everything on here as accurate as we can. Now on these ultras, there's really no room for error, okay? They got to be spot on. I've noticed that if you use the wrong size oka or if you have this aligned improperly you're going to get a lot of bubbles so you want to make sure that you get this aligned as best as you can so everything looks good here we'll set this on our laminating base mold and use our alignment right here to make sure everything's aligned let's go ahead and press down and let's make sure our glass does not lift or move while we release this. If it does, we may have some issues with alignment and it looks like everything grabbed good. Yep, we're good. All right, let me just get my hat on the way. It's always getting in the way. There we go. So we have our alignment here. OCA is applied. Get any bubbles out of here. There we go. Let's get our little door open. And we're going to want to go ahead and reveal our glass and OCA. So our glass looks ready to lift. I'm going to go ahead and reveal our OCA. Pull tabs work wonders. Perfect. So we got everything here. And we're going to go in and just use our default OCA lamination settings, which I went in the video. I'm going to go ahead and hit OCA. And in case you guys are interested on the settings, once again, um, OCA pressure is 0.6, our temperature is 70, vacuum 100, and our press time is 150. So this is going to take a couple minutes. I'm going to go ahead and cut right here, and then I'll reveal our finished OCA to glass lamination. All right, OCA to glass lamination has finished. Let's go ahead and reveal. And this is gonna be hot, so I'm gonna put my glove on. Oh, good. So it looks like the glass got stuck up on top here. And I'm just checking for alignment. And it looks like everything is good to go. So we are good. You can see how the alignment and everything on here is perfect. We did get some bubbling. If you look here on the bottom corners where my hand is, you can see some bubbling. Now with the S20s and above, we found that it is best just to laminate the OLED to glass just like this. Um, you know, whenever we try autoclaving these little bubbles out, for some odd reason, we just get even more bubbles. So we're not even um, autoclaving this glass anymore. We find that it works just fine like this. So let's go ahead and get our magic mold. 
we are going to be using this. I'll set this up, get this ready. And let's begin getting our OLED ready. So what I like to do is we like to tape this flex down just to keep the flex from interfering because when we do try to set it on the base mold, it just gets stuck and it just makes it kind of difficult to work with. So I'm just going to use a little bit of scotch tape here. Tape this down so it doesn't get any interference. There we have it. So I did do a detail clean and if you notice I did remove all the little frame tape that was on the back here. So make sure you do do a detail clean, make sure everything's uh, removed from the OLED panel. Now I do want to show you some little marks that you may get on your S20. If you notice there is a little bit of scratches, hairline scratches on the, on the display. If you look right here you may be able to see some scratches. I hope you guys can see this. But I just wanted to let you guys know how thin these polarizers are. And you know, getting little hairline scratches, um, you're gonna get them on the on the actual display. But the good thing is with the OCA, it fills the majority of them in. So um, to our customers out there, you know, we do our very best to handle these as best as we can. But you know, you may see some small little uh, marks as far as, um, you know, maybe a little bit of dimples or anything like that. But it's very, very minimal. I'll show you guys the finished OLED panel so you guys can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. So we're going to go ahead and want to give this a good clean. And once it's clean, we can go ahead and laminate our glass onto it. And remember guys, this one did have some bleeding actually right here on this left side. You can actually see where it did leave a little indentation from the damage on the glass. So I'm going to do my best. I'm really hoping that this bubble is not, or excuse me. I'm going to do my best and hope that this bleed does not pop because sometimes with these small little bleeds it may cause lines or it could just pop. So I'm going to cross my fingers and hope for the best. Let's go ahead and uh, get this detailed. So everything looks nice and clean. I'm going to go ahead and gently set this OLED up on its side and we got a little piece of dust. Get that out of here. Help catch a lot of the particles in the air. Purify this contaminants that are floating around. So I'll set this right here on its side, very gently on its flex side. This will just help prevent any kind of dust or particles to reveal or land on it while I reveal this and apply the glass to the OLED. So I'm gonna go ahead and reveal this. So I like to work with my left hand, right hand I'm going to go in and guide the little camera punch. So I'm going to reveal this here, very gently, it's dust free, good. I'm going to go ahead and align everything in here, best as I can, using my trained eye. There we go, and we're going to just slowly let the OLED fall into place, aligning manually to the glass itself. And you want to be careful not to press down anywhere besides in the middle, because if you press down on the lower and in the middle, you're going to actually cause some bubbling. So we're going to go ahead and need to apply this sticker right here. I'm going to press it down in the middle and we'll apply this sticker here. So once that's there, we're going to go in and lay this on top, very gentle. Make sure not to press anywhere else on the glass. You can see how it's only pressed here in the middle, which is great. Hope you guys can see that right there. I think you can see. It's only pressed there, so that means the vacuum and everything's going to suck everything out as we need to. So let's set this in here. And you just got to take your time here and make sure this is aligned properly. Last thing we want is any kind of misalignment and the flex be hitting on this mold incorrectly. So this does take a few little seconds and looks like we're good there. Good. So we can go ahead and put our mold in here. Get this setting. We're going to go to OLED and we're going to choose our glass and I believe our magic mold settings should be set. We're going to do 0.3 for pressure. Our temperature is going to stay at 70. Vacuum is going to be 80 seconds and our press is 7 seconds. So we're good. 
I'm just gonna make sure nothing moved on us while I set that in there and it looks good. Everything looks nice and aligned. I'll let this squash. I'm gonna cross my fingers, hope that little bubble does not burst or cause any kind of lines. Um, and then we'll go ahead and cut back as soon as this finishes laminating. Okay, the laminating has finished. Let's go ahead and reveal. Take a look and we can see our finished product, which to me, she looks great. To you all, she may not, because I'm gonna show you guys why. You can see all the little bubbles on the corners. You see that? Right there, right there. And then on the lowers, you can see these little bubbles. But the great thing about that is it'll actually cook out with our autoclave. I'm gonna first go in and test this though before I set in the autoclave. Just make sure that we didn't get any more bleeding or issues with these little marks that were on there. So let's go ahead and get our tester. I'll plug it in. And it looks good. Beautiful. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. And it looks good. Oh, star pound. Let's go back. Star pound zero, star pound. And let me show you guys how she looks. See that? That's our lamination. The, the bleeds are still here. You can see. Touch is fully working which is great. This is gonna be a nice, beautiful B grade because it does have these little marks here. So let me just get out of this screen and let's go ahead and sleep. And I'm gonna show you guys all the little, I'm hoping you guys can see this, but I'm gonna try to show you guys, but you can see that a lot of the small little hairlines that were there are gone. So that's the great thing about this Oka is it actually fills in a lot of these little hairline scratches that that you may see i mean this to me looks flawless i don't see any waving or anything like that but it's just something i do like to disclose to you guys so you can see but if you look here you can see how everything looks beautiful buenissima so we'll set this in our autoclave for about 13 minutes and once that's done i'll go ahead and show you guys our finished product and of course, bubble free. All right, the autoclaving has finished. It's going to reveal our OLED. Just going to give it a clean. She came out beautiful. And everything, all those little hairlines and everything are gone. Let me just show you guys here the finished results. Looks great, great. So you can see all the bubbling and everything has disappeared. We had a lot of bubbling up over here, right here, and on the lowers. But everything is great. So we're good to go. Now the final step in this is actually going to be to put it into our UV light. This just helps cure and harden everything on here. So we'll set this in here for three minutes. Once that's done, we can go ahead and install it onto the customer's frame or phone, whatever it is that you're going to do with it, or set it in back for inventory. So that pretty much wraps up my video, guys. I really hope you guys got some useful information. Once again, if you guys haven't subscribed, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell so you're notified on our latest videos. And if you guys have any questions, comments, or screen repair, please visit us at www.mrphonedoctor.com or simply uh, reach us at our social media platforms. So hope you guys have a great week. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Cheers.